back to For the Record. His district covers Western Dane County and parts of Green, Iowa, Columbia, and Sauk counties. And after nearly a quarter century in the Senate, Senator John Erpenbach has just a year left. He announced this week that he wouldn't seek re-election next fall. I sat down with him this week to look back at the early days of his legislature career and some of the highlights along the way. Take me back to 1998 or maybe 1997 when, you know, what prompts a 30-something-year-old, I think, mm -hmm. to run for state office? Every parent wants to have a say in what the kids' world's going to look like, you know, what they're going to grow up with, what opportunities they're going to have. And, and this wasn't anything I ever planned on doing. In fact, the, you know, I had no idea what I was going to do with life at that point. But I'm driving to work, and I exa exactly where I, I remember where I was. I'm on County Trunk M, going around the north side of the lake, heading into the capital, just because it's a nice drive in the morning. And I decided at that point, if I'm ever going to have a say in really what my kids' world's going to look like, at least here in Wisconsin, and try and make the world a better place for them to live, uh, you either run for office or you find something completely different to do. Uh, to try and, and, and help that along. So I decided at that point to run for office. Walk me through the uh, preparing for that election. What was it like to win? We golfed on election day because it was really cold, but we golfed on election day because my campaign staff just basically said to get him the hell out of here. So, you know, we went golfing and then that night, um, Rusty's a bar in Middleton, which is where we had our victory party. Seeing, you know, your name come across the, the scroll at the bottom saying you had won was unbelievable. Fred Risser was at Rusty's that night, you know, and Chuck Kuala was there, and, and uh, I think Dave Travis stopped by and so on. These are all uh, people who used to work, uh, work around this building, and it was really something. I mean, that night was so much fun. You're dropping some old-time names there. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Yeah. What were those early days in the legislature like for you? Um, I was very fortunate because there were a couple of state senators aside from Chuck, uh, Rod Mullen uh, was one, Roger Bresky was another, who basically said, they call me Erpy, basically said, Erpy, just shut up and sit down. Don't say anything. If you have enough votes, that's good. Just keep moving. Uh, but their advice throughout the process as far as making sure that you have to stand up for your principles and your values and what you believe in and, and be articulate and to the point about it. But at the same time, you have to recognize there's a whole other side over there. You'd only been in the legislature for a couple, in the Senate for a couple of years yeah. when 2001, the no call list happens. What, what prompts that and what makes a pretty basic a junior senator um, introduce a fairly significant bill and get it passed like junior, that. I was a freshman senator. My Let's, bad. Yeah, no, I was <laughs> freshman bad. Freshman senator. All right, so here's what happened. <laughs> I was at the uh, Middleton Senior Center, and you do listening sessions around the district. But I'm at the Middleton Senior Center, and you know, it's you know, come and tell John what you think, and John will tell you what's going on at the Capitol. Um, and we were two or three questions in on other policy when somebody brought up telemarketing, and I lost total control of the meeting because the seniors were doing nothing but talking about the telemarketing calls that they would get. 45 minutes later, somebody said there should be a law. So we went to work and put together a no call list. Life was politically a little easier after that. Um, only because, oh yeah, you're the no call list guy, you know, and it didn't matter where I was. Uh, hey, no call list guy, you know. Uh, so that, that actually helped kind of get my name out there a little bit more, but it also helped me realize that the best ideas for legislation, they don't come from elected officials, it comes from people you represent or people you talk to. There's another one I'm working on right now, piece of legislation um, with the DOT. and and. A lot of people don't know this. You know your little license tag, your expiration, I think mine's May and whatever. There's a specific day in the month that it expires. Did you know that? I did not know that. A lot of people don't know that. I thought, okay, I'm fine, you know, till the end of May. Well, no, I'm not. I got pulled over once and it was expired. And I'm thinking, what, it's like May 17th. Well, it expired two days ago. And, you know, it's like I didn't get a ticket. Um, but so I'm thinking, why not just change the law that it's due at the last day of every month? Working on that, and hopefully we can we can pass that. Uh, if if we uh, if we do, that's my last hurrah. And you're welcome, Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> All to fix a policy that we assumed was already in place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward uh, for me, another decade. You're no longer a freshman or junior right. senator or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you've been there a while. It's 2011, Act 10 is happening. Walk me through the decision between you and 13 other senators to leave Illinois to stall that legislation. Well, the or leave, Sorry, yeah. leave Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> the decision was actually easy, and, and this decision was made 
for us by the actions of Governor Walker at the time. Uh, I don't want to say we didn't have a choice, but we really didn't have a choice because the governor introduced it, I think, on a Thursday and wanted, <clears throat> wanted a final vote on it the following Thursday. And this was, in, in my career here, the most significant piece of legislation that I had yet to see or will ever see. We wanted to have a debate on this. We wanted to slow it down. We wanted to see, we wanted people to see what was in this. And the only way to do that was to actually leave the state. Three weeks in February in Illinois, it was beautiful. Um, it was awful, actually. Um, and there was a time uh, I walk across the street after doing a bunch of interviews to go grab a bite to eat, and it was Harry Carey's restaurant, right kind of kitty corner from the hotel I was staying at. And guy jumps off his bar stool, points at me and yells, Erpenbach, get your ass back to Wisconsin. I hope I can say I know it's Sunday morning, and I'm sorry. But <laughs> that's exactly what he said. Uh, and he was, you know, not happy um, that I was down there. And so we talked for a while, and he finally understood why we were doing what we were doing, but he totally disagreed with it. And I said, this is the only option we have. Otherwise, that guy, along with, you know, millions of other Wisconsinites would have no idea what was in that package if it passed within a week. We lost. We knew we were going to lose. Uh, governors, for the most part, usually get what they want. Uh, there was a better way for Scott Walker to do this and a more diplomatic way to do it, but he chose not to, so we went to Illinois. We'll continue the conversation after the break. And welcome back. Let's get back to our conversation with Senator John Erpenbach. His thoughts on both parties as he prepares to retire. Well, you've got a year left. You're not rerunning. You can say whatever you want to say. Okay. What do you want to say? Politically? Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. Things are really kind of messed up right now, and it's it's not because Democrats believe this or Republicans believe that. It's because the D Republican Party is a mess right now. And we have to have a strong two-party system. As much as I disagree with most of what the Republicans want to do, they have to be strong and Democrats have to be strong. That's how democracy works. People need, need a choice. And the way it is right now is the minority within the majority party, which is the Republicans, the minorities are in control of everything right now. And we see it because the speaker has lost total control of this Gableman odyssey. You know, the speaker introduced it and said, this is just gonna be, look at the elections, and, and Gableman is totally out of control right now. Talking about locking up mayors is baloney. He can't do that. Um, it's a threat to democracy, is what that is. So, if Robin Voss tries to pull Gableman back, the minority who's, are in control of the majority party, they're gonna be mad at Robin Voss. So Robin Voss right now is in a jam, but it's a jam he created. And I think for the betterment of democracy, he needs to figure out a way to tone it down on his side. Most Republicans I know, they don't believe the election was stolen. Most Republicans I know don't believe in what Gableman is doing. Most Republicans I know believe in voting rights. Yet, the majority of those Republicans who believe that aren't in control of their own party. So they need to figure it out so we can get back to the, the idea of doing good bipartisan legislation. So we can get back to the idea of actually listening to each other rather than yelling at each other. So where we are today, you brought up Act 10, actually started with Act 10. Scott Walker said, my way or no way. And then when he was recalled, they used the recall petition as like a blacklist. If you sign the petition to recall me, I'm not going to appoint you to a commission or a board. He's saying to half of Wisconsin at that point, you don't matter. And for any governor or any state senator to say to half of your district, you don't matter, they shouldn't be in office. It's easy for a Democrat to talk about Republicans. Uh, yep. Let's talk about your own party. Do you have any criticisms? Are they do could they be better? Um, we can be better by making sure we understand as a party that every vote in this state counts. And our job is to make it as easy to vote as possible, whether they are going to support Democrats or not. We need to make sure we also have candidates on our side of the aisle, on the Democratic side of the aisle, who actually reflect the district that they're coming from as opposed to, well, if you're gonna be a Democrat, you have to believe in A, B, C, and D. Well, they might believe in A and B and have questions about C and D. That doesn't make them any less of a Democrat than, than somebody who might be a little more progressive or you know, coming out of uh, the Isthmus here in Madison or you know, the Upper East Side of Milwaukee. Uh, Democrats need to be competitive 
in every corner of this state. And we really need to do a much better job of getting the message out that we have been pushing for high-speed internet in rural areas for a long time. That we have been pushing access to affordable health care for a long time. Some people don't believe that or some people don't know that. So as Democrats, we need to be, we need to be better at that. Any final thoughts? No, just I want to thank uh, the people who kept me employed you know, for basically what will be about 24 years, kept me out of my parents' basement, so that's good. Um, I, I, being elected to something sounds really cool. Um, and, you know, you walk around the building here and people say, hello, Senator, and stuff like that. And the second a legislator starts to believe there's something more, there's something more than they actually are, that's kind of when they've lost it. We, we talked about telemarketers. You got telemarketers and then you got politicians as far as how people view us and, and, and what we do. Um, so our job is to be as humble as we possibly can, but more importantly, listen to people, uh, try and help them out as best as we possibly can, and respect whether we agree or disagree with what others say. We, you have to start with respect. If you don't, you shouldn't be here. All right, Senator Urban Bob, thanks so much for your time. All right, thanks. You can recap these conversations online right now at channel3000.com.